Nearly 400 commissioners went to Victoria wondering what would happen to the report. A sessional committee of 24 commissioners met two days early to decide how the issue would be presented to the council. These 24 commissioners came from every conference across Canada. They represented every shade of opinion from conservative to liberal. They decided that they would present nothing to the council that they themselves did not unanimously agree on. When they came to the floor, the clear spiritual grounding of their report and the conciliatory manner in which it was presented had a tremendous effect on the discussions of the council. Marion Best, an adult educator from Naramata, British Columbia, past president of British Columbia Conference, was president was the chair of that particular committee, and Marion is here with us today. We're really glad you're here, Marion. What Thank a job you were assigned. I was a little scared mm. when I was asked to do it, and in fact, um, it was only after some consultation with friends and um, a prayerful consideration that I agreed to do it. Mm -hmm. How did you possibly get consensus or agreement out of such a widely different group of people? Well, I think it'd be important to know that um, I didn't go into it assuming that we would reach consensus. It was the group's decision to try that model, and um, I was pleased that they wanted to try it. But we also had agreement that if any point it broke down, we would begin to take votes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And did you? We did at one point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At one point, we did not have consensus. It was clear that there were a number of people with a different point of view, and so we didn't want to hold up things and we agreed to take a vote and we took a majority vote which we presented in our first hearing to the council. Mm -hmm. Some people say that oh well that group they were just manipulated that it was all a great plan from a head office to get them to all agree. Uh, what, what do you say to that Marian? Well the only thing that I know that head office did was um, help set up the sessional committee and then I was uh, absolutely free along with the committee to decide how we would work. And what about the makeup of that committee? Were, were they all liberals? Not by any means. We had mm -hmm. one person who was a member of the United Church Renewal Fellowship. We had three people who said they had signed the Declaration of Dissent that the Community of Concern had published. Mm -hmm. And we had a number of people who described themselves as, I think they used the phrase, small c conservatives. Mm -hmm. And we had two people who had signed the uh, statement that uh, Friends of a Firm had published. Then we had resource persons, yes. though, and the resource persons included one gay person, one lesbian person, and then subsequently an, uh, an ex-gay person who joined our group as resource persons. You feel it was important to have the uh, gay and lesbian people there personally? Oh, I think it was critical. Why? Because we're making decisions that affect their lives. And uh, one shouldn't make decisions about people without consulting with the people whose lives are being affected. But it's a lot easier sometimes to uh, be angry and indignant in people's absence. Oh, of course. And there were two points in the committee's life when someone said to the gay and lesbian persons, I feel very uncomfortable with your presence here, and there are things that I can't seem to say because you're here. Mm -hmm. And some other people echoed that. And so at that point, we just had silence and we sat with our pain and said, when the silence is over, we'll decide if we want to ask these people to leave. And so we had a very thorough discussion twice of whether the gay and lesbian person should be asked to leave the committee. We had the power to ask them to leave if we chose to as a committee. And you decided to keep them? They decided, the committee decided by consensus that these people should stay, yes. Mm -hmm. This matter of silence, I noticed when you presented the report to the council, often you'd suggest that we just stop talking and be quiet. Often you would read some verses of scripture. Is this something that was done? Is this uh, important in the consensus process, Marion? Well, it was certainly important as we worked together because we knew that uh, we were trying to be a covenant community. And a covenant community doesn't mean that we humans just covenant with one another. It means that we are together under God. And so to have scripture read. Um, we had both individual and corporate prayer often, and we had long periods of silence. So this is different from a meeting of a club. It's a meeting of a church in God's name, in Jesus' name. Yes, and could be like any church board or session could operate if they chose to. If they would just stop and listen to God once in a while. Do you think congregations can use this, this technique or this approach more than the confrontational one? 
Yes, especially if they have small groups. Uh, 24 mm -hmm. to 30 people is really a very large number to work with mm -hmm. in this manner, but uh, smaller groups can certainly work quite effectively in this way. And I think that it's important if people are open mm -hmm. to really listening to one another and are willing to treat each other with respect, even though they have differences of opinion. Mary and the commissioners are now home across the country. Uh, mm -hmm. They have a big responsibility. Have you been thinking yes, about that? I have. And some have written to me, and I've written to all the members of the sessional committee because I've been thinking about them and, and praying for some them. Some of them too. are in pain, and some people in our church are in pain. I realize that. Mm -hmm. And I think that at this point, many people in our church are in a state of grief and loss. Some people are feeling betrayed. And while I don't think the council really made any big changes in what's always been our policy, that's not how it's being perceived in many places. And until people deal with their grief and with their anger and with their sense of, um, of betrayal and alienation, will they be able to really sit down and study what was said? So this requires people to listen to each other and be able to listen to people with different opinions. Mm -hmm. One of the things we said in the committee was that we don't have the whole truth. That uh, there are a lot of things we didn't know about homosexuality. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of things we don't know about how God is speaking to us. And so we needed to confess that we didn't know everything, but that we needed all the different points of view to journey together under God in the hope that we would discern God's will for us. Marion, do you think we can stay together as a covenant community in the United Church? I think we can if we choose to. We listened. We worshipped. We had a sense of responsibility and accountability. We had silence. We had laughter. We had shared leadership. We had tears. We had shared pain. We had self-disclosure. We shared a love for the church. We had a sense of God's presence in our struggle. We prayed individually and corporately. We didn't rush. We showed respect. We showed courage and perseverance. We had dreams and visions. We let the Spirit sing. We didn't need to have all the answers. We were willing to dialogue, and we felt the presence of the Spirit.